Just Mercy, card house drama directed by Daniel Destin Cretton, who's previously done Short Term 12 and is now working on Shang-Chi for Marvel. The film stars Michael B. Jordan, Jamie Foxx and Brie Larson. Um, it is based on a book under the same title, written by Brian Stevenson, and it's based in turn on actual real story. Stevenson is an attorney played in the film by Jordan, who has made it his life mission to provide legal support to death row prisoners who would often lack access to such support. And in many cases would turn out to be mistried or quite often actually innocent. The movie focuses on one such story. Brian moves to Alabama short after graduating um, Harvard and meets a death row prisoner named Walter McMillan, played by Fox, who was accused and convicted of murder several years prior and is now awaiting his sentence to be carried out. As it turns out, the entire case of the prosecution rests on the testimony of one single witness. There is no other proof that Walter actually committed the crime. No fingerprints, no physical evidence, no motive, nothing gained from it. Brand begins to get deeper and deeper into the case archives and then into the testimony provided. And the deeper he goes, the clearer it becomes that Walter is being used as a scapegoat. And so begins the procedural drama that deals with themes of racial injustice um, on the surface, but actually goes a bit wider in its observational critique of American justice system and shows that the problems are not only related to race, but also financial status and class. Um, it shows the systemic abuse of people from poor communities and the bias with which they are treated by the police and the courts, the systemic oppression. And before you, can, before you say that the system cannot be oppressive because the law is the same for everybody, only individuals can, well, sure thing, but when those individuals are part of the system, and that system not only doesn't prevent them from abusing their power within the system, but you could even make a case that it rewards them, well, something wrongs, something's wrong here. Um, despite the fact that the story is almost 30 years old, it takes place in the early 1990s, I think that it is remarkably current in its look into the problems in the US, as is evident in the recent wave of protests across America. In fact, since movie theaters were closed anyway for the pandemic and the movie was supposed to, to premiere somewhere in spring, as soon as George Floyd's murder sparked the protests this year, the studio actually released the movie on the internet for free, so anyone can just go and check it out. Um, another point I think that I think the, the film makes quite well is it shows those that those acts of injustice and racism um, are not always those big life-changing things, although they certainly can be, but oftentimes they come down to little acts of oppression in everyday life. Um, the hurdles that are thrown in front of Brian are as he tries to do his job as a lawyer. Uh, you know, the police and courts actively opposing his work, even though he's professional and polite and courteous all the time and basically just trying to get to the truth. And that one scene where he arrives in prison for meetings with prisoners and is unlawfully told by, by the guards to get naked so that he can be, get searched. Um, I think the main reason why all of this works in the film rests on the shoulders of Michael B. Jordan, who is excellent in the lead role. His reactions to the stuff around him and the emotions that he, that he goes through and he displays, especially through his facial acting, um, the anger, disbelief, terror, humiliation, disappointment, he sells each and every one of them and is completely believable in the role. Uh, I also think that the film nails its emotional punches. For the most part, it is this slow procedural drama, but there are moments when it just goes for the hit and lands it every single time. I was on board, emotionally speaking, for the whole time. As I was watching it, I pretty much only had one criticism, and that had to do with the way the movie presented the death row prisoners as a group. Um, there are three of them featured in the film uh, as important characters, and with everyone it seemed like they haven't really done anything wrong, but have been mistreated by the system. And I thought to myself, okay, I'm willing to accept one, because that's what the whole story is about. But three out of three, I mean, that's stretching it pretty thin. I thought it misrepresented death row prisoners as being exclusively victims instead of criminals. But then at the end of the film, you get the uh, standard standard for movies based on true stories uh, series of slides with real life photos and information about what happened to the characters afterwards. And it turned out each of the three was actually real and portrayed quite accurately. The movie didn't mention if they were really held in cells next to each other as they are in the film. 
And I assume that this was an oversimplification for narrative purposes, but I'm willing to forego the previous criticism because in light of this information, I think it's rather baseless. And that's it, I guess. I didn't find anything else to really be upset about. I think Just Mercy is a very good film that tells an important story, does it well, and has the advantage of being released in times which make it extra relevant now.